Hi guys, what's up everybody and welcome back to House of a Warrior. My name is Lorin Adoyo. If you're new here, karibu, karibu sana. And if you're an old member, thank you so much for coming back to watch a new video. Please keep telling a friend to tell a friend to tell another friend to check us out and let's fill this house up. Okay, so you guys, it's September and uh, September is Sickle Cell Awareness Month. And like I promised in my previous video, during the whole month, Month, I will be bringing you real stories from real warriors, um, doctors that treat us, and also our caregivers. Um, and on this first interview, I have Lea Kilenga Bay. Lea Kilenga is um, the director and founder of Africa Sickle Cell Organization. She has also been termed as Kenya's greatest sickle cell advocate. Leah, thank you so much for doing this with us. Um, um, thank you for making time. You're so, so welcome to House of a Warrior. We are so happy to have you here. <laughs> yeah, so... Yay, um, thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> Leah, you have... Um, you are truly an inspiration. I want you to know you're truly, especially to me, you're an inspiration and you're a true global health leader. Like, do you mind if I ask how this started? Well, it started 10 plus years ago mm -hmm. um, when I got frustrated. You know, the way we go to hospitals and sometimes if you land in the wrong hospital, just cross your fingers, they know what they're doing. Yeah. But I think I reached a point of frustration when I went to this specific hospital. I was in a dire crisis. It was a private hospital, so I expected them to know what they were doing. But then when I landed there, they were like, Okay, so what did you say you have? Sickle cell. So how do you normally manage yourself when you're in this situation? Mm -hmm. I'm like, seriously. Really? You know, hydration, <laughs> oxygen, pain management, please yeah. help me. I am dying. Yeah. So that made me think, I'm like, I, I cannot be just the only one with this condition. Mm -hmm. Because all the people that we meet imagine in the world's and people still do not understand what sickle cell is. Mm -hmm. Doctors don't understand sickle cell. Nurses don't understand anything. And when you go to the government, because my mom was working in Afia House, Ministry of Health, yeah. it's like it's not even a priority or a problem. Wow. Yeah. So I was like, what will it take? Hey, what will it take for, for me to amplify this voice, this frustration? So yeah. um, 2013, 2014, I initiated 10,003 Warrior Project. Mm -hmm. My vision, or it was a... <laughs> it was a hobby. Yeah. It was it was just something someone wanted to do. Let me take 10,003 photos of people like me and you okay. and tell their stories mm -hmm. so that these people know that it's not just me. Mm -hmm. So I embarked on that journey and I never looked back because now the situation on the ground uh -huh. I <laughs> was so bad that now I reached where I had uh, 400 photos and I could not go on because now you're getting very, very sad stories of people being yeah. locked in rooms, children being locked in rooms because the pain is too much. Yeah. There's no pain medication and the parent doesn't know what to do. So they just lock them. Yeah. Or a mother with three children who has been abandoned by the father. Yeah. Most of the children have had a stroke or they're disabled. They're not going to school. They're in a very destitute situation. Yeah. And, and for me, it was really haunting. Yeah. And I couldn't just keep these photos or go back to my work or go back to my other business. I was like, huh? I need to try and see how I can solve this problem. Wow. Because, yeah. You know, I thought I had it. We are I'm one of the youngest sisters among three sisters who were born with sickle uh -huh. in our family. Uh -huh. uh, unfortunately, we lost our oldest sister okay. before the age of five. Sure, sure. And, and through our life growing up, uh, we've understood the pain of sickle cell, not only the physical pain, but the psychosocial and psychological pain yeah. of parents caring for children, of your siblings looking at you when you're in pain and crisis, the amount of money it takes hey, to address sickle cell, how you miss school and, and people, you know, look at you differently. So it yeah. was, for me, it was, it's like if I'm feeling the way I'm feeling, how about the people who have nothing? I know. Wow. Yeah. Great first yeah. step. Look at you now. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. Yeah. I have defined sickle cell on my channel, especially the scientific terminology of it all. But how would you define sickle cell in your own words? In my own words, because I speak a lot about sickle cell, I just say sickle cell is because I just want to give you facts. Yeah. Sickle cell is the most genetic um blood condition um affecting sub-saharan africa mm -hmm. uh it uh, affects the blood it changes the shape of your red blood cells yeah. instead of a round full beautiful wheel uh -huh. you have a crescent shaped banana that is supposed to ride through like yeah. a wheel is supposed to ride yeah. which is impossible Okay, so great. with that, yeah, with that crescent, it causes a lot of problems with your with your ability to take carry oxygen, your ability to have enough blood for your function, like your normal functions, your ability yeah. for your organs to function properly, which in most cases causes a lot of disability and death. Uh -huh. And in Africa and in places like Kenya, up to 90% of children who are born with sickle cell do not make it yeah. to their fifth birthday. That's a sad, sad reality. Sad, sad reality. Yeah. yeah. So that's sickle cell. <laughs> yeah. So Lea, Lea, when were you diagnosed with sickle cell? Ah, so you know, I am lucky because I was number three in our yeah. house. So the doctors are like, let's just diagnose all the, all your children, Mama, because oh. you have two already. So yeah. I was diagnosed very early at six months. Oh, lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was really, really, really lucky. Yeah. Like, but yeah. but still lucky. <laughs> Bad, yes. Yes. <laughs> how yeah. do you, how do you handle stigma? Because sickle cell comes with a lot of stigma. Yes. Um I stigma for me, I didn't know what stigma is until I was in smack dab in class six. Uh -huh. And there's this new boy in school in our class came from America. Uh -huh. And uh, you know, my eyes are jaundiced, my yeah. stomach is swollen, I'm skinny, I'm not like the same size as everyone. Yeah. So he kind of picked on me. He was like, ah, this girl is different. Uh -huh. She has this contagious disease no one oh, should gosh. speak to her or sit next to her or uh -huh. slowly the boys listen separated uh against me <laughs> Did I lose you? Am I still there? No, yeah. Still so, there. yeah, it, it reached a point. Even the, the 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 teachers in the class they put us in rows, single rows, mm -hmm. because now no one wanted to sit to with me. So it didn't. It didn't. They didn't want it to look weird. Oh. So they helped me be in a single row so that you can mask that. But they also didn't make it easy for me because I was exempted from all punishments. Mm -hmm. I was exempted from swimming and PE. So it was it was a different levels of stigma mm -hmm. that were not I did not understand what it was at that time. Yeah. Until until I went and asked my parents, Pony, what is what is wrong with me? Yeah. And they told me that, oh you know you have sickle cell. Um the doctor explained to me this is a lifelong condition. Yeah. That's why you have pain. That's why you're going to the hospital, you have medicine. And I understand, but experiencing the rejection. That was hard. Sorry? Sorry, guys, we're having technical difficulties. Discrimination, the <laughs> ISO. Uh, what, sorry? No, 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 you had yeah, to appear a little. <laughs> no, so, um, the moment I realized that I'm worthy of good things, because sickle cell isolates you, the pain isolates you to a point where you feel like you're not worthy of good things. That's true. And worthy of love. Yeah. yeah. So when I able to overcome that and love myself despite and in spite of being a warrior yeah i was able to overcome that stigma yeah and for me i think that is the biggest stigma that people like us need to overcome for us 
not to be faced by the societal stigma. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have, mm. according to me, a very controversial question. Um, I say it's a lot of times on my channel that sickle cell has no cure. But what are your thoughts on this? Do the therapies work? Oh, sickle cell um, has no cure. <laughs> <laughs> but they they have made progress with regards to things like bone marrow transplantation yeah um but now that one is, is also a whole other challenge it takes yeah. a lot of resources a lot of time for you to recover yeah um and you're exposed to high levels of um chemotherapy to now strip you of your immunity so it is not really it's not really safe for yeah. for people like myself yeah and also there's gene therapy which is now being researched yeah. and still has ways to advance and still has ways for people in Africa to access it because they're no longer do they're not doing it in Africa okay so based on those things I in my mind it's, there's no cure still that is applicable to all of us okay uh, and what we have now is things like hydroxyurea and and the infusion therapies mm. um there is no cure yeah but there's a way to live with it okay well yeah i think yeah okay so there's yeah. a lot of misconceptions okay. <laughs> out there about sickle cell like which ones which ones annoy mm. the most because i know there are like some really dumb misconceptions about what sickle cell disease has <laughs> tell me tell me one <laughs> i i hate it when people think i'm gonna infect them with sickle cell like that is the biggest i'm like come on really i keep telling you this is an inherited disease just the fact that mm. i am in pain i am it doesn't mean that if you touch me you're gonna catch it you know <laughs> <laughs> yes Yes, that, that is a huge misconception because I think people, when they see yellow eyes and jaundice eyes, they're like, yeah. yellow fever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that one is very, it's highly infectious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the other ones that really arc me is, is that sickle cell is leukemia. Yeah. Wow. No. <laughs> wow. It's not leukemia. <laughs> yes. Maybe the medication we use is similar because hydroxyurea is a form of chemotherapy yes. that yes. helps leukemia, uh, but it's not leukemia. Mm -hmm. And the other big one is um, people with sickle cell cannot give birth. They mm -hmm. cannot have children, which mm -hmm. is a huge lie <laughs> based on my sister and yeah. based on all the other people we know in our lives. Even me. But the other Even one, my testimony. Think, yeah. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and you're okay. Yeah. Um, the one that I think is I found out when I was in the village, when I was doing the work, is that sickle cell warriors are angry people. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, we have we ha apparently we have we have <laughs> a lot of anger in us oh god and it's not it's not a lie yeah what? it's not a lie because we are easily, we easily fly off the hinges. yes easily irritated mm -hmm. and uh impatient mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes psychological stress or emotional stress really gets us off so i think it's something that is not a misconception but i think it is something that I have noticed in many sick warriors like they're very yeah quick yeah to maybe there's there's fire. like like there's half truths in there <laughs> yes the half truth <laughs> half truth yeah okay so yeah. if you could if you could change anything that comes with having sickle cell what would it be for you if I could change anything ah, la, la, la. they ability of sickle cell to cause disability yeah um 
you know sickle cell has some funny funny symptoms like some funny complications like uh this a vascular necrosis necrosis of the bones mm-hmm. and it's if you once you get it it's very difficult to manage it to, to a point where you can live a normal life yeah instead of living up to having a hip replacement yeah so for me that is a very debilitating symptom and the other one is, is the strokes oh, like yeah. if you get a stroke for in sickle cell it is if you don't have this support and the therapies that are needed especially like in our context in kenya we don't have those rehabilitative resources yeah. available universally especially yeah. for people in low income areas then you live with lifelong disabilities uh so for me i sickle cell is just a very debilitating condition and yeah and if if we were able to manage it properly because i don't think we have cracked it uh-huh. in in africa and also in the us because the therapies that we have still do not solve most of the problems not everyone can get hydroxyurea not everyone mm. can get medication mm-hmm. and so majority of people are disabled cannot go to school cannot work and so that even makes life not worth living yeah. that's why we have a lot of suicidal ideation um but one of the symptoms that i appreciate that i've come to <laughs> yeah i've come to appreciate <laughs> so me julie is um is delayed growth and development oh yeah <laughs> because you always look young yeah that that one is a good one to have <laughs> yes yeah, but not the not the not the severe one for mal- malnourishment no. or children no, no, no. who no. you know not hitting their milestones but the one that you know you look preserved <laughs> is good and second for me is um the ability to have jaundice i'm not saying this is a good thing this reflects some internal problems like yeah. if you're stressed or if you're hemolyzing if you have an infection mm-hmm. or your like your body is undergoing something your eyes will tell you yeah and when your eyes tell you then you're able to take action oh, so you're able to go ahead of it yes yeah so for me when i see my eyes are jaundice i'm like okay i need to eh, rest hydrate make sure i'm still i'm relaxed make sure i'm not get having any kind of fever or anything it helps me get ahead of things mm-hmm. before i reach to the point where i know you're in crisis and yeah. you're like shit you're dying yeah yeah you know what yeah. i would have said if if you asked me this question um what i would yeah. change i would have said the yellow eyes because that's one of <laughs> the biggest insecurities mm. i'm always like damn you know I I wear glasses. Yeah. Okay, I don't uh, lately because they don't help me. But without mm. my glasses, like that is the first thing everybody notices. Mm. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, so I would have said I would change the fact that <laughs> eyes are always yellow. <laughs> but I get it. I, I get know. how that could be an advantage. Yeah. Yeah. I know even me mine are yellow. Like you know, you know for some from for some warriors, they have specific symptoms there are some people who are chronically suffering from leg ulcers or some people who have um like their stomachs are distended yeah and some people who oh, have that's jaundice true. yeah that's true. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so i don't have all those other, but jaundice is like one prominent symptom that i have mm-hmm. and all my life i've never been able to clear my eyes um and the only way that i've been able to if water for me even I don't know why people say water but me when I sleep they clear. Really? <laughs> yes, when I rest. <laughs> ah, <laughs> clear. Okay. No, I I don't know anything. Like I drink yes you hydrate you hydrate but you can only hydrate to a point. That's true. They, they don't yeah. clear properly but when you rest for me now they become like very white. Wow. So I'll try that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what 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 else do don't you like about Sikosa? <laughs> what else do I? Don't you like Ugh, the medication? If they said you can only take your medication once a week, I would be so happy with that. Like why do I have to take it daily? <laughs> I don't like that. Yes. I don't. Yes. <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. Oh, me, oh, like, yes, the, for me, my education is not a problem now. When I was younger, it was like a very big problem. Oh, when, when I, I was, was younger, I didn't even take young, it most of the time. Adolescent. <laughs> <laughs> And a teen and a young adult. Yeah. Uh, but the pain also, ay, 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 the pain of sickle cell. I don't know if people really understand that. Yes, the pain. Ay, the yeah. pain. You that know, was gonna be my that was that was going to be my next question because um okay, I recently did I recently did a video with my sister and we were trying to define what a painful crisis feels like because everyone keeps asking so what is this painful crisis like how would you describe yours honestly you know i had a mini crisis like last week and it's like i've never had a crisis before every time it's new you know, each, each each time you get crisis it's like a whole different world yeah and for me, I don't know even how I can describe the pain. The only way I think, I have never broken a bone, so I cannot tell people to imagine that. Uh-huh. But a toothache, because everyone has had a toothache, the one that you can't even sleep, you can't even, you can't do anything. I've had that one, yeah. Magnified <laughs> by a hundred or a thousand. For me, I think that is the cause of pain. Now localized, either in your back, in your stomach, in your leg, uh-huh. in your hip. Uh-huh. Yes. For me, I think that is sickle cell pain. And you don't take many. Like for me, it usually starts slowly, climbs, climbs, climbs. Mm-hmm. So when it starts, you, I need to attack it there. Even if I'm saying it's a small discomfort, I attack it with the water, mm-hmm. rest, and uh, anti-inflammatory uh, medication. I take some supplements, natural ones. <laughs> but then when it reaches a certain level, I can no longer take oral painkillers. <laughs> like when I take, I vomit. Yeah. You know, when, when it reaches a point where I'm in so much pain that I can only vomit. Yeah. I just vomit. My body just, just wants to do something. So I, I, I vomit. So I can't take anything. I can't take food. I can't take oral medication. So wow. that is when I go to the hospital and they infuse me. Yeah. And that's not where I want to go. Yeah. So Gosh. The, 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 the key for pain is to address it early. Yeah. Yeah. When, when I was doing the research for that video on a painful crisis, I found out that sickle cell is number eight on the list of the most painful experiences a human no 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 the most painful experiences a human can ever experience number eight number eight what is number one i think it was a heart attack or something apparently a heart attack is more painful okay we are not downplaying that but i think it was like yeah yeah (laughs) yeah wow so i wonder i wonder how how anyway i don't know maybe because a lot of people don't speak about it there's no way to measure pain for yeah. sickle cell like, yeah like what would you what would you say but it's it's very painful for us to reach a point where we are given opioids yeah um it, it, it's really painful like for it anyone is. who is listening who has experienced sickle cell pain you're not alone we all feel the same pain Mm -hmm. um just manage it early enough it doesn't get to the levels where you can't turn it around yeah okay um our last um i want you to give a piece of advice um to our doctors our caregivers other warriors you know whoever it is that is battling this disease in any way form or shape you know Hmm. For me, for for warriors, I like I absolutely love you, and I I adore and congratulate the strength that you have to reach the level that you are at. Um. Sometimes, uh, and in many cases, we are very hard on ourselves because we are not like everyone else. And uh, we want to measure ourselves against other people uh, who don't have sickle cell. Yeah. And the fact that you carry this heavy burden um, that people may not realize is strength enough 
for you to be able to go out in life and address challenges and your life forthrightly uh, without shame or without fear. Because yeah. I think for me, um, let me just come back to myself. Like sickle cell has been very defining in terms of the work that I do, but in terms of the person that I am. Yeah. So I think it is a fire that has refined me in terms of understanding myself, loving myself for who I am. Yeah. Strengthening me to be able to uh, to to face life um uh, in a in a in a very sober way, in a very um empathetic way. Yeah. Um because it's not it's not a bad thing. Sickle cell is not an completely bad. I will not say it's not entirely bad because it helps you to shape it shapes the person you are. You can either choose to be better or you can either choose to languish in in fear and misery and sadness. And I don't wish that for any one of you yeah. because there's already a lot of sadness in the world and a lot That's of sadness true. that comes with sickle cell. Use that as fuel to to face life. Yeah. 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 Thanks. And um yeah. <laughs> for for doctors, just understand, just be patient. A lot of there's this thing I saw on social media on Twitter that a doctor was blaming a mother for a lost daughter, a daughter who has just died. It's like the mother had uh, said that the condition is is witchcraft and it's and it's all that and this is the third child she's she's lost. Yeah. And but this doctor was her doctor. So it is not only the work of advocates or people like us yeah. to educate yeah. people who have been overcome by stigma, who have different misinformation around psychosity you also have a role to educate, to empower, to support that parent yeah. with a child with sickle cell. Yeah. Encourage them. Yeah. And tell them of the good stories of the people who have survived, who have families, who have beautiful, beautiful lives. Mm -hmm. And tell them it's not the end. Yeah. So I think they have a big role because doctors, people trust doctors to a very, very yeah. high degree and yeah. carry that and give life to the parents so that they can be able to pass that life to the child and support the child well. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's, <laughs> those are the critical people that I needed to speak to. Uh, thank you, thank you. Um, okay, I'm back guys. I wanted to say, you know, um, the work you have done for warriors across the country, um, you are a powerhouse. Mm -hmm. I just, I am hoping to, you know, um, follow in your footsteps one day and just continue your good work. Mm -hmm. But for today, like, I am so beyond excited we got to do this video. We cancelled it a few times, but we are here. <laughs> and thank you so yes. much for making the time once again. I am very, very grateful. Um, another thing I wanted to ask, I have seen you in a lot of pictures and a lot of videos. You always have your headgear on. Yes. Is, that, is it just for a sense of style or is it something else? Yeah, for modesty, I I, I don't show my hair. Uh, and also for me, I want to for people to see my uniform uh, because it's the work that I, anytime I'm in public, I I usually have my, my head covered. Oh. Um, it's just the seriousness of the work. And I'm a very spiritual person in terms of, it shows my obedience and devotion to the Most High who gives okay. me the ability to do this work. Yes. Wow. So, yeah, this is this is this is me. When you see this, know that I am not I am not serving my own self, but I'm serving um the Most High Elohim. Uh, yes, to do this work. Um, and God has given me this gift and uh and the life that I live to be able to to serve him uh, in this way. I have to tell you, Julia, like I watched your videos and you're doing amazing work as well. Um, keep up, keep keep it up. You know, we all have a role to play. Uh, 
with regards to voicing um, our lives with sickle cell or helping people with sickle cell like ourselves. And I think you're doing an, a, a fantastic job. Yeah. Um, all the personal challenges notwithstanding, and please do keep up. And let me know if I, I can come back here and, and, and speak some more. <laughs> I will be really, really delighted to come thank back. You, but, thank you, um, so much. Yeah, <laughs> let me know how I can support. <laughs> I will, I will. Actually, I'll, All right. I'm gonna end the video right here and I will do the intro, the outro separately.